chicas! Welcome to Coding for Chicks! Today we're going to create our very own, wait for it, computer game! It's so amazing! And it's going to be tic-tac-toe. And to do that, we're going to use, among other things, the matrices we learned about in last episode. For those of you that don't know what tic-tac-toe is, it looks something like this. You start with a hashtag, <laughs> and then one player is going to place an X somewhere on the board, and the other is going to place an O. And then you go one player after the other until one of you has a line of X's or O's, either across, down, or corner to corner. As you can see, the O player has actually won because he was the first to get a line of O's. Now, if you look closely and imagine a matrix, wouldn't uh, this be one list, and this be the other, and this be the third one? Hmm, I think so. Okay, so we know we have to create one big list with three smaller ones inside. So we're gonna go L, uh, T, T, T for tic-tac-toe. And we're doing the brackets for the big list and then we need the little lists and I'm gonna do a trick which is multiply by three which will create three times the thing I put inside this list and that is going to be an underscore the reason is I want some sort of a placeholder before the player places his X or his O and this I need to do three times so I'm just going to copy it and paste three times. The next thing I want to do is actually print out the list so I can show it to you. But I don't want to print it out as one line, I want to print it out as a matrix. So I need my for loop here. I am LTT, I'm going to print I. And that means I'm going to print out each individual list inside of the LTT list. See, here you go. This looks like a matrix. This is the first list, this is the second one, and this is the third one. And now I just have to fill it in. Before I create my so-called game loop, I'm going to print out instructions for starting the game. Let's start the game to stop, right, exit. My game loop is going to be a while loop, and I'm going to leave the parenthesis empty for now, because we will continue filling it out as we go. My first player is now going to tell me where he wants to place his X and he will need to give me the position. So for example, if he wants to put it here, he will have to tell me it's going to be in list zero, in place zero. Or he wants to put it here, then it's going to be in list one, place zero. So I will have him indicate with a comma in between the numbers. Okay. So I'll write choice and I'm going to use the raw input function since he's going to be writing on his keyboard. And please write where to put your symbol. And to help him, I'll write row, comma, column so he knows how to write it. You're probably wondering what a row and a column is. This is the mathematical way of talking about a matrix. So a row is just the position in the big list and a column is going to be the position in the smaller lists. So this, you know this, but it's just a different way of talking about it. Now I know what to put in my parenthesis. I'm going to write choice doesn't equal exit. So if my player doesn't write exit, he's going to continue playing the game. But be careful, now I've used choice here without initializing it. So I will need to initialize it here above choice. And now we're good to go. Oopsie-daisies, I've been a lazy programmer and I haven't put my s for a string in front of my choice variable. This is going to help me when I explain the next thing, so I'm going to put it there. Now let's get the player's position. I want an integer for the row and then I'm going to write s choice and zero. Now why do I do this? Hmm. Well, a string can be thought of as a list. So each individual letter in that string has a position. And the first letter in the string that my raw input is going to return is going to be the row. 
So now I have my string, but hmm, I want an integer. So of course I just typecast it as I've done so many things be times before. Now let me get the column as well. And that's going to be exactly the same thing. But I want the third letter this time, as you can see. Zero, one, two, three. Now the next thing I need is an if statement that's going to check if the place I chose in my matrix is actually empty. So I'm going to check if this row and this column contains the underscore I defined before. And if it does, I'm just going to steal this since it's going to be quicker. If it does, I'm going to place an X there for starters. I'm just going to move this inside of the while loop and run. Okay, so I need to choose a row, one comma one. And my X is placed in the middle. I'm going to try again, one comma zero. Oops, like, oh, like this, <laughs> and my X is here. So this is working. Now let's continue. Now I can't only place X's everywhere. I need to be able to place the zeros as well. So what I'm going to do is create a variable that's going to know which player's turn it is. And we're going to start with player number one. So I'm going to check if player number one has finished doing what he wanted. Then I'm going to switch to player number two. And else I'm going to switch to player number one if I had player number two. I'm also going to create a variable called s symbol that's going to indicate the current player symbol. And it's going to start with x, of course. And then I need to switch it here to o. And again here, if player number two has finished, to x again. We've actually got a working game right now. But I would like to add some small things such as telling the player when the game is finished and the board has been filled. Okay, let's put my round counter right here. And I'm going to define it as a zero. And after each turn, I want to increment by one. So what I can do is just check it right here inside the while parenthesis. And if i rounds equals nine, that means I'm finished with my rounds and I can just stop right there. Hmm, that reminds me of a song. But anyways, what I'm going to do is I want to tell the player that he's finished with the game. And I'm going to do that with an if statement. We're going to go if i rounds equals nine, then we're going to print the game is finished. Finished! And then we're gonna break. And that means we're going to cut out of everything, also our while loop. Although I really love my axes, I need to put S symbol here or we're just going to continue putting axes everywhere. There are a few more things we could add. We could, for example, say right here which player's turn it is and which symbol we should be using. Then we would just exchange this by this and add the player's count in here as well. Or we can actually check if the player is putting a row or column that is outside the bounds of the matrix. And that we should do in here. And then we should handle that with some else down here. I recommend that you try either one of these or both. If you find these suggestions a little bit too challenging, I recommend that you start by changing something like in the text or adding instructions or playing around with variable names. But if you don't find it challenging enough, then I recommend you try to check if one player has won. And that is going to be a little bit more difficult than something you've done before. But if you're up for it, that would be probably a really, really good exercise. This is all the tic-tac-toe we have for today. If you like my video, please leave a like. If you would like to ask a question, just leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. If you would like to know when my next video is out, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for listening. This is Coding for Chicks.